So lately I've been working on some new things with Entity Framework Core and I've been looking for a way to reduce how long I spend just working with APIs and databases. And I don't want to spend much time on that. As it turns out, I don't have to if I use the right tools. Let's check this out. All right, to be able to show you what I mean, let me get some things ready first. We'll need something to test this on after all. So make sure you have the latest Visual Studio ready. That's 2022 for me. Also, for this project, you need to have the ASP.NET and web development and the data storage and processing workload installed. So make sure you have those covered too. Now you need a project. For today, we're going to work with an ASP project. So launch Visual Studio 2022 and create a new project. In the search box, type ASP.NET Core Web API, select it from the list and click Next. Name it something like EF Sidekick Demo. Choose where to save it and you can leave that ticked here and click Next. Choose .NET 7 here, more on that later. Leave this to None and ensure Configure to HTTPS is checked. Uncheck Use Controllers if you prefer minimal APIs or leave it checked for a traditional controller structure and click Create. Done. The project is ready to go. Now we need our database. I already have one from our previous video. So if you need help with that, I'd recommend you check that one out as well. But in short, we set up a new database with a customers and orders table, just populated with John Doe and his order of one C sharp course. Simple stuff, really. And anyway, the interesting part about today's video is what comes next. With our ASP.NET Core Web API project set up in Visual Studio, it's time to introduce today's main course, Entity Framework Core Sidekick. Don't worry, it's completely free to use and doesn't even require registration. So head over to devmagic.com and find the Entity Framework Core Sidekick download section and grab the plugin. This will redirect you to the Visual Studio Marketplace where you can download and install it. Just a heads up, you will need to close Visual Studio to install the plugin properly. Now with Entity Framework Core Sidekick installed, reopen Visual Studio and our project. All right, now let's start using this. Right click on the project in the Solution Explorer, navigate to Entity Framework Core Sidekick and select new entities from DB. Here we'll connect to our database. If it's your first time, click New to set up the connection. I'll be connecting to a SQL Server database, but Entity Framework Core Sidekick supports various databases like PostgreSQL, SQLite, and many more. So you should be fine if you decide to use a different database. Now here normally, when you click on this, you will get a list of available servers for you to choose from. But sometimes, as in my case, you will get nothing. If this happens to you, there is a really simple workaround to this. Open the server management studio, right click on your server and right here, you'll find the name you are looking for. Copy this and paste it into the extension. And now you should have your list of databases visible to you. Select your database and click on OK. Now you should be able to see your tables here. For our demo, we can only stick with one, the customer table. But as we have both, we might as well add them both. The extension is doing all the hard work for us anyway. Then click on Next. Here we'll see things we can configure. The only thing you need to know right now is that you can see Net7 for the version we will be using. If we open this, you'll see why we use Net7 for the project. As of the recording of the video, .NET 8 is not yet ready for full production as it's still in preview, so we decided to settle for 7. But for you, it might be different because you're watching it in the future, so make sure to check that here. In any way, click on finish and we're done. Alright, for the next step, well, Sidekick is already telling us what the next step is, so that's convenient. Just copy this builder right underneath the other ones here in the program.cs file and copy this connection string into the app settings file right here. And what did this do with our project? Well, by following EF Core Sidekick steps, 
we've successfully integrated our database into our ASP.NET Core Web API project. The tool generated entity classes for our database tables, which means it created C-sharp representations of our customers and orders tables. And additionally, it scaffolded a DB context, which is essentially the heart of our entity framework core application, allowing us to query and save data in the database effortlessly. But that's not all it does. Another big part that requires quite a bit of work to do is DTO generation and scaffolding API controllers. Let's check that out next. To generate DTOs from our entities, right click on your entity and use EF Core Sidekick. Then select Generate DTO. Here you can select all the columns, click on Next and then use, for example, the DTO Mapper. Now, before you hit Finish, there's something special Entity Framework Core Sidekick allows us to do apply custom code. This means you can add custom using statements, inheritance, or even add code snippets directly into your DTO class files. So yes, this is not just a step-by-step -step template builder. You can customize it to what your own project needs to. Once we are ready, click finish. We get the next steps again. In this case, these are not required, but you can go ahead and implement them if you see fit. As you can see, we have successfully built a customer mapper and a customer DTO with just a few button presses. Pretty neat. Next, we want an API for our project. Specifically, we want to build the necessary scaffolding for it. Luckily, with Entity Framework Core Sidekick, we can do this pretty quickly as well. First off, creating services. Right click on an entity and select generate services and APIs. If you need just the CRUD operations without the API layer, deselect the generate API option. This generates service code that can be used directly in your project. These services are the workhorses that interact with the database, performing the basic create, read, update, and delete functionalities. After you generate the services, take a look at the code. EF Core Sidekick lays out everything neatly. It's here we see the application of clean code principles. Each service has a single responsibility clearly defined. This not only makes our code base cleaner, but also ensures it's easy to maintain and extend later on. In our case, we are going to generate both the service and API layers together by choosing to generate all APIs. This means with just one action, we can create an API layer for our application, complete with controllers for each service. So let's keep going. Click on Next. Here we see everything it will create. Also, with Entity Framework Core Sidekick, you can inject custom code into your API services just like we did with DTOs. This could be adding custom using statements or class attributes directly enhancing the generated services and API controllers with your own logic and requirements. Once you're done with this, click finish. Now follow along these steps here to finish setting everything up. All of these just go right where we added the other builder code, except for the Swagger code, as we don't have Swagger installed ourselves. And just like that, our application and database is ready to be used as an API. Such a huge task and we did it in less than 10 minutes. That's just incredible. I always spend so much time when I start a new project, just preparing everything before I even get to write a single interesting line of code. But now, well, you can see the length of the video right here. You've seen me following each step and other than waiting a second or two for things to load, this was pretty much real time. So you're telling me with that, it takes just a few minutes to set up an ASP web API with scaffolding, correct database connections, models, and DTOs done? Yep, I think that's worth it to install a free extension to do just that. And with that, I hope that you learned something valuable today and I hope that you can make use of this to also make your life just that much easier. If you've made it this far into the video, please subscribe, hit a like button and tell us in the comment sections what you would like to see next. I'm Dennis Panyuta and I wish you good luck on your future projects and I'll see you in the next video.